Hi, I'm Dr. Evan Lewis, pediatric and adult neurologist and cannabis medicine specialist at the Neurology Centre of Toronto. Welcome to Cannabis 102. If you missed our first video, Cannabis 101, covering the basics of cannabis and how it works in the body, then it might be a good idea to start there first. In this video, I will describe the ins and outs of becoming a medical cannabis patient and the practical implications of treatment. Medical cannabis first became available in 2001, but only for certain conditions like HIV. In 2013, the Medical Marijuana Access Program allowed patients to access dry cannabis for a greater number of conditions, including epilepsy. When the Access to Cannabis for Medical Purposes regulations replaced the MMPR in 2016, patients were finally able to access different formulations of cannabis, including oil preparations. Recreational cannabis was made legal in 2018, and in 2019, more forms of cannabis, such as edibles, were legalized. This has been called Cannabis 2.0 in the media. Only federally licensed companies can grow, process, and sell cannabis. License holders are held to particular standards as outlined by Health Canada when it comes to growing conditions, processing requirements, oversight for contaminants, etc. These license holders are often referred to as license producers or LPs. All license holders are listed on Health Canada's website, and the website indicates which companies are authorized to sell cannabis. The first step in accessing medical cannabis is to have a consultation with the prescriber. Only physicians and nurse practitioners are permitted to prescribe cannabis. The physician or nurse practitioner will complete a medical document that is sent off to the LP of choice. The patient or guardian of the patient then registers with the LP. This can be done online on the LP's website or by telephone. Once the medical document is received and the registration processed, the patient or guardian on behalf of the patient is authorized to receive medical cannabis from that particular LP. Ordering of the product is done by the LP's website and it's delivered by mail and usually takes within one to three business days. As of January 2020, a wide variety of cannabis products have become available. Those listed on the right side of the screen are the newly available products. Oils or tinctures are used for most medical conditions and in children. However, depending on the condition being treated, various different preparations may be required. Another way to classify available products is by their composition. This can be done by looking at the relative amount of THC and CBD, presence of the other cannabinoids such as THCA, or by the terpene profile. A knowledgeable prescriber will be able to guide you as to the composition of product that's best suited for your medical condition. The composition of common cannabinoids and non-cannabinoids for each product are typically listed on the licensed producer's websites. In this example, the colored bars show the breakdown in milligrams per milliliter of CBD and THC for this oil preparation. This is important because all medical conditions should be properly and adequately dosed based on milligrams of CBD and THC required. A knowledgeable prescriber knows the exact milligrams required for the medical condition being treated based on available scientific evidence. This dose may vary from patient to patient, especially in children, where CBD and THC dosing is typically based on weight. Some LPs also provide the terpene profile that can be seen here. Costs vary widely and will depend on the composition of the product. For example, how much CBD versus THC is present, the amount of cannabis required per month, and the price of cannabis determined by the particular LP. Costs can range from less than $50 per month up to $1,800 per month, depending on all of the above factors. The best way to compare cost of CBD, for example, is to look at the cost per milligram as shown in this table. This table is available for reference on NCT's website and Instagram. Generally, there is far more information available in the medical literature on the adverse effects associated with recreational cannabis use versus medical use. Short-term effects of THC include tiredness, forgetfulness, nausea, and dizziness. 
With higher doses, there can be excessive sweating, increased heart rate, anxiety, and paranoia. Euphoric mood or feeling high can be considered an undesirable effect in some cases, like managing epilepsy, where a person needs to be functional during the day. But in other cases, it can be a therapeutic effect, like in the treatment of chronic pain. Common short-term effects of CBD include diarrhea, tiredness, and decreased appetite. Clinical trials indicate that these effects tend to occur at higher doses of CBD. We know quite a bit about the short-term effects of THC and CBD, but much less is known about the long-term consequences. The long-term effects of THC come from many recreational trials. These long-term effects include changes in IQ, behavior, and mood. Some studies have shown structural changes in the brain. It is important to note that these effects were seen in adolescents who used very potent cannabis that was high in THC over long periods of time. The available data on long-term effects are mostly not consistent, and more rigorous studies are needed to truly determine the long-term effects of THC, CBD, and the other components of the cannabis plant. There are no laws that indicate a certain amount of cannabis one person can consume before driving. This is because, as we've learned, there's a wide variation in composition of cannabis products. In addition, cannabis affects everyone differently. The Ontario Medical Association has released helpful guidelines to determine time limits around cannabis consumption. If cannabis is consumed for medical purpose, then one should wait about four hours if inhaled and six hours if ingested orally. If any time a psychoactive high is experienced, then that individual should wait eight hours. For the time being, it is illegal to transport cannabis across the Canadian border. It is also illegal to bring cannabis into a foreign country, even in places where it is legal. As an example, despite cannabis being recreationally and medically available in states like Colorado and California, it is illegal to cross the federal U.S. border with cannabis. Exporting licenses can be obtained from Health Canada. If one is interested in traveling outside of Canada with cannabis, then contacting Health Canada would be the first step. Now you're familiar with some of the practical aspects of cannabis medicine in Canada. Remember to check out our other video, Cannabis 101, if you missed it. Thanks for joining me for this introduction into the world of cannabis medicine. And please, feel free to browse our website for more resources and follow Neurology Centre of Toronto online for more cannabis information.